All right, we're rolling. Welcome again, Glenn, Glenn here with uh, GeoGeeks at Home. And um, I am pleased to have David Hansen with me. David is uh, working at his home office in Gulfport, Mississippi. And David, right. you are the CEO of uh, GeoJob. Yes, sir, that's correct. I think it's the first interview that we've done since I've moved to uh, CEO at GeoJobs. So that's been, um, you know, pretty, pretty interesting over the last quarter. Uh, of course, uh, the first quarter that I am the CEO of GeoJob, we go through a global pandemic. So uh, always an excellent test of leadership right out the gate. <laughs> of course. Put you, yeah, throw you to the lions. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So 2020 is uh, starting off to be an interesting year for GeoJob. Lots of changes. Um, Neil, is, I'm, I'm sure Neil's still out and about. Can you, what's Neil up to? Yeah, absolutely. So Neil is founder is the uh, title that he's going with. You know, he's been really the CEO and leader for two decades, for 20 years. So, um, you know, absolute shout out to him. I've been working with him for the last eight uh, pretty closely. So in our, um, Neil had some very kind words in our press release on the subject of, of whenever we announced I was becoming CEO. Uh, Neil and I still work together very closely uh, every single day. So uh, just yesterday, uh, you know, we're having an hour long cell phone conversation just on the subject of COVID-19, uh, the impact on the company, what our overall plans are, examining the stimulus package for small businesses, you know, and thinking through uh, how this impacts our professional services and our products, you know. So Neil is still uh, heavily involved uh, day to day. Like I said, we talk regularly. So, and Glenn, I know mm. you, uh, you were on the GeoJob uh, payroll there for a while. You're working for us. So you, uh, you definitely got familiar with myself and with Neil and some of the other key players at GeoJob. So mm -hmm. yeah, you know yeah. how involved it looks to be. Yep, definitely. And, uh, and I know that you guys are uh, probably definitely well well set up and prepared for uh, times like this with GeoJo being, uh, I mean, you guys are probably close to 20, 20 strong, I think, right? And largely um, spread out like many uh, smaller companies and you guys are spread out all over the country. And, yeah. yeah, we uh, were pretty spread out. We think, um, <clears throat> you know, there were limited testing in the beginning of this thing. So we actually believe that maybe it uh, kind of swept through our Center for Research and Engineering uh, first, kind of first week of March. Uh, we still have one person who's out with heavy bronchitis, a younger guy, but still heavy bronchitis and just lung issues for a solid three weeks now. So um, you know, it, it's been a challenge because at the time when he initially got sick, there were only about 50 tests in, uh, inside of the state of Mississippi. So now, you know, it's to the point where we're doing more testing, that kind of stuff. But uh, it's been it's been a little impact on our uh, definitely our product uh, timeline on development there you know and of course you know I, just, I want all the employees to be as healthy as can be we moved to uh, remote work for those that were actually in offices very early on in this uh, process so you know uh, we already had several people that were remote so moving those that were in offices to remote has also it's just a good business decision to you know, insulate ourselves from, uh, you know, the sickness overtaking multiple people and affecting an entire division. Uh, so we don't want any customer outage during this time. So that's a pretty smart move there. <coughs> there was concern about me for a little while. You can hear us have a cough, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I have, uh, I have strep throat. So uh, getting over, getting over that a bit, of course, uh, global pandemic of COVID-19 and I'm uh, unfortunate enough to catch strep throat. So I'm always an outsider, always end up doing things a little bit different. So I guess that's on brand for me. <laughs> yeah, great timing. It's, you know, coincidentally, I actually I have a uh, respiratory a virus right now too that I've had a couple of weeks and led me to go get tested. And you know, thankfully, I'm not uh, afflicted with with the coronavirus, but uh, gave me a bit of a scare. And like you know, it's a really crappy time to have a nasty cough right now. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, everyone definitely keeps the six feet away from you whenever you uh, cough with your elbow there, right? Yeah. So, um, I, uh, I'm still avoiding public, uh, myself just out of, in case I do have something and I'm asymptomatic on that part, even though the culture came back to strep throat, I don't want to cough on something and be carrying something and have that pass along. So I have an abundance of caution. I've, I've hunkered down myself for about the past half month. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Me too. It's a, it's a good plan for sure. And hopefully we'll get through this 
quickly. I'm uh, I'm kind of concerned about a couple of couple of areas in America that uh, it's getting scary. New York, in particular, it's like you know, wow. So uh, from home, my Slack was just going off. Yeah. You gotta gotta appreciate that. <laughs> Everyone has Slack and Microsoft Teams, and you know, at least we're in a time period and an age where we can insulate portions of our workforce in this way. So that's uh, it's pretty fortunate, you know. So yeah, yeah. and. You know, I've been self-isolated really since the uh, the Esri Partner Conference and Dev Summit because I was out there for there. We did stay the entire mm-hmm. week. That was very interesting experiencing the response to, um, you know, to the disease uh, inside of California. So being there for that and then coming back to Mississippi and it being an incredibly different kind of atmosphere where things were at the time. Now, things are heating up in Mississippi now as far as the, uh, you know, the spread. So people are taking it more seriously here. But it was definitely uh, kind of eye-opening that transition between two geospatial regions and seeing kind of what their level of uh, kind of the general populace's thought was at the time. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And you guys, I mean, you're almost next door to uh, Louisiana, which I hear is becoming a, rapidly becoming another area of concern. No yeah. surprise after uh, the Mardi Gras activities and yeah, it's yeah, particularly uh, New Orleans. That's right. You know, I mean, New Orleans is an hour away from us. And uh, one of the things our mayors in our county have brought up is a lot of people in New Orleans have second homes here in Mississippi on the Gulf Coast. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are leaving New Orleans and coming to their second homes and staying here to kind of get out ahead of what's going on in New Orleans. That's so causing a lot yeah. of uh, interstate traffic there that is worrisome to some of our mayors. For sure. Oh, I can imagine. And you know, the be- beaches, right, are beautiful around uh, around your area so yeah exactly people thinking hey if i'm going to self-isolate i'm going to go to a nice beach and do it uh, yeah we just yikes. tried to close the beaches to uh to large groups they're still allowing single people to you know run exercise do that kind of stuff but but no grouping on the beaches now as of friday so and this is mm-hmm. you know thursday so it's been almost a week since uh since that's gone out so yeah wow so uh regarding um uh, the Esri Partner Conference. So you guys, you guys were there, and I saw it seemed like the Partner Conference took place. Well, I don't know if I'd say as usual. Obviously, there were some changes, but uh, how how did that go? I'll tell you. There just there was not as many partners there. Kind of the Esri Red Badge ratio to like partner ratio. It seemed like a lot of the partners did go ahead and pull back early, which was probably wise, particularly the international partners. You know. Uh, we really didn't get the news about the uh, partner conference kind of pulling back in scale until the night before we were getting on airplanes. So we still decided to go out. However, we left our booth behind because we knew that the, um, you know, the expo area was going to be closed. So we left our booth behind. We went out there and, and, you know, we pretty much ended up, we went to the partner conference for a couple of days. We didn't have any of our developers fly out. We went ahead and kept them home. Um, the people that were out there though, we had the, Airbnb for an entire week. We didn't see any reason to fight crowds, so we kind of waited it out until we had an off-hour flight, you know, and uh, we stayed at the Airbnb for a bit and and just used it as an opportunity for internal team building. And uh, as I said, I, we're pretty sure that uh, definitely some type of very bad infection, if it was not COVID, it was something else, went through our Center for Research Engineering at the time. So we were getting reports that back home people were getting sick. So we thought we were better just self-isolating in place at the Airbnb, tell everyone else to disperse down in our office. And then by the time we got back to uh, our home base of operation, we already had everyone working remote. That was minimizing exposure there. So that's kind of the route that we decided to go. Um, you know, it was, it's, I mean, man, just to have Dev Summit canceled, that was, that'd be a huge gut check for, you know, Esri leadership. And, um, you know, particularly to do it so close to the actual Dev Summit. And I know there's been some mixed opinions on that, you know, but looking at what the spread of this disease, I, I definitely applaud Esri's kind of uh, foresight and forward thinking to be able to uh, go ahead and, and call that off. You know, that was, uh, that was, seems pretty wise to be able to uh, get that out there and make it a remote conference. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely not, not an easy thing. And, you know, it's always easier in hindsight to say, oh, you know, should have called it sooner or whatever. But that was a couple of weeks ago. It was a, it's a whole new world whole today new world. compared to the two weeks ago. Yeah. And, you know, I spoke at a lot of sessions in the um, at the partner conference. And I know a lot of those can go out on the partner portal afterwards recorded. I know the sessions that I was speaking in were recorded. I did some lightning talks. I did a whole session on 
how to use your uh, support systems, like your uh, people who provide your product support or professional service support, how to grow your brand using that. You know, that's real big for GeoDub. You know that from your time interacting with us. Uh, Blake Bilbo, our head of support, is really a well-known name in the community, I think, with the people he interacts with. <clears throat> a lot of people have trust in him, have, um, you know, he's built faith with the community as, as kind of doing that outreach. And uh, so he recently sent out a letter and uh, posted it on Reddit, Twitter, LinkedIn, a couple other places, just reminding people that we have a free version of admin tools and that that free version of admin tools can be used for mass management of geospatial items, users, and groups. And that's really useful in times like these. So just kind of reminding people that those exist. There's a free product that, uh, that can be helpful. And then also, I saw that Blake uh, put a Reddit post that uh, reminding people that last year at the uh, partner conference at the Dev Summit, we handed out hand sanitizer uh, for part of Clean My Org for uh, advertising Clean My Org. And I think that uh, the importance of hand sanitizer is now known to all kinds of people. Uh, but at the time, I probably seemed like a madman because I was flying to Palm Springs with 30 pounds of hand sanitizer <laughs> yeah. uh, in individual little, little uh, containers um, to, to do that promotion, right? So, and I've seen where several people have tweeted and put out that they still have those bottles of hand sanitizer. So uh, if you are using them, uh, note that that hand sanitizer should be good till October according to the expiration date on it. So uh, use up that GeoJob Clean My Org uh, hand sanitizer while still. <laughs> yeah, awesome. You know, I still, I have, I have one of those in my car right now. So awesome. I, yeah, I found two of them here a uh, little over a week ago. So those are great. And I bet you would have killed to have another uh, suitcase full of those this year, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Apparently it, it is, it is like gold, certainly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah. And you raise a good point, you know, with, um, so um, a lot of geo, you know, geo people are actually, as Will Cattle was mentioning, he's saying, you know, it's not like it's a, a couple of weeks off for people right now, right? The geo, geotech people, uh, more than ever, a lot of them are probably really hunkering down and are playing an important role of this, albeit, you know, we're always behind the scenes, yeah. but, uh, right, uh, standing up these... Uh, all the dashboards and web services that, you know, people are depending on. Um, yeah. Right. So, the, you know, these guys are busy and maybe the people who aren't as busy. This is a great time. If you're people at home, um, download something like, um, you know, clean my org or uh, admin tools and, you know, start using it while you're at home. Like it's a great time to learn it and go through the support materials. Yeah. You know what I'll tell you is, um, you know, just recently someone, actually yesterday, someone called me looking for training resources just to, to brush up on different subjects while they were, because they were working in local government and just to be blunt, they're working local government of, of Jefferson Parish around New Orleans. And um, they're in a situation where, you know, although he's in the planning department, he's justifying his, his, his work from home basically and trying to figure out what he can do with that, right? So it's not just you know, geospatial people, but these planners that are working from home, uh, you know, he asked me for some training resources. And I pointed him over to the uh, learn.arcgis.com, which I think is, is really, really awesome. You know, Esri's got that out there with all those training courses, all kinds of free ones, you know. Um, there's some paid ones, but still going through those free ones and brushing up on a particular subject or going back and revisiting some of those massively online open courses that Esri right. has out there. Like this is an excellent opportunity um, you know, not just for geospatial people to brush up on the skills, but also to get maybe your planners if you're in local government or, you know, your administrators or maybe like your people who aren't necessarily directly involved in what's going on right now with the response. This is an opportunity for them to, to explore some of those skills and see what they can learn. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, by all means. <clears throat> and I've been, uh, you know, sharing with my uh, um, non-geo <laughs> friends who have a lot of them have kids that are at home that are bored schools are closed and whatnot hey you know they've uh, there's some great um online educational um stuff from right our friend joseph kursky and all the the edu team um you know they can they can start messing around with data right get a free account and yeah use some open data from their own community and see what they can do uh, Joseph, just like there's, there's a powerhouse of awesome content and awesome information there, you know, I mean, the, 
stand-up guy always i mean it, it's it's unfathomable the amount of lives he's probably reached through generating the content that he does you know mm-hmm. so yeah, absolutely anything that joseph has out there is is worth exploring 100 percent. so yeah. yeah i'm actually i want to uh try to have a call with him i believe he's spent having a lot of his time right now supporting uh teachers right and helping them to um right deploy online curriculums and such so. yeah we we have i wish there was more i could talk about about what yeah. Chico is doing, but because of the nature of some of our clients and how they are choosing to respond to this and, you know, various NDA, it, it's amazing to see the sudden need for, although they always needed geospatial, the sudden recognized need of having a map of something in front of you, having a map of your assets, of your impacted, you know, workforce, but particularly suddenly everyone cares about where their assets are, right? And um, just seeing the amount of private sector and government uh, agencies that are now tapping into their master service agreements with GeoJob, to be honest, this is, you know, a, an absolute explosion in the demand for geospatial skill, you know? So that, that equates to a lot, of, a lot of work for Esri business partners or other geospatial professionals, you know? Uh, so that's been, that's been interesting to see. It seems that People like to, in a way, politicians in particular, like to kind of mothball GIS whenever there's blue skies. But whenever the thunderclouds show up and everything starts looking gray and gloomy and, you know, or in this case, the tsunami is coming, they all of a sudden really, really care about geospatial technologies. They really, really care about mapping. They really care about GIS. So, um, you know, a bunch of fair weather friends we have. (laughs) Right, right. And now some of them are probably kicking themselves because they didn't uh, give the approval to the uh, GIS manager's request for uh, certain, right, licenses and budgeting for, right? Yeah. (laughs) Why do we need geo event server, right? And now you need geo event server. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, that's huge. And then, you know, from the GeoJo perspective, you know, we have admin tools. We have in my org. Those are both very useful for mass amounts of data, but we're really working towards having the ABCs of GIS. So I have the A with admin tools and the C with clean my org. So the B is going to be backup my org. So that's going to give me admin tools, backup my org, and clean my org, calling it the ABCs package that everyone needs. And backup my org is going to allow users to be able to do timed backups that they want. They can say, hey, this web map's very important. Back it up every single night when all, all the feature layers that are dependent upon it as well. And then back up my whole organization weekly or monthly. It's going to allow them to do local backups, backups to the cloud, wherever they want. And they can back up their ArcGIS Online organization or their ArcGIS Enterprise. And some people ask me, well, I'm already doing server backups. Why do you need to back up my ArcGIS Enterprise? Well, you need to back up that ArcGIS Enterprise using Backup My Org because we allow a scalpel surgical-based restore where you could say, all right, instead of having to roll back the whole server to a week ago or you know, my last good restore point, I can say just roll back this impacted feature layer or this impacted web mapping application or this impacted web map. So we think that's gonna be really major for people, particularly as they're seeing this explosion of geospatial content, web mapping applications, web maps, feature layers, you know, users, groups, we're gonna be able to back up all that and restore it. So um, you know, we're really, really excited about the ability to provide that. We were originally looking at a uh, launch uh, more in June, but with our uh, products department getting heavily impacted by a respiratory disease, which we're hoping isn't COVID, but we're not sure, uh, that's uh, actually impacting our product uh, launch timeline just a smidgen by that. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. So uh, okay. Glenn, do you have any questions around that or something you want to ask there? Cool. Yeah, I was going to say, so that's probably something that uh, hopefully people will learn more about that at Ezra User Conference. Um, which we all hope still takes place this July. Right. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And I was going to ask your opinion, Glenn. What do you think? Do you think uh, Esri UC? You think it's a go, no go? What's kind of your thought as an industry expert? Boy, July. Right now, I'm optimistic yeah. mm. that that it's going to be a go. But you know, <clears throat> let's hope. Travel planning, though. I mean, outside of yeah. You know, after he's got the got everything booked and money isn't an issue, I'm sure, as far as canceling, you know, if that has to happen. But for people, you know, I'm I'm sure they're not gonna feel confident that it's a go until May or June, right? And then that's gonna be twenty thousand people having to scramble to make travel plans. That's <laughs> that's a bit of a nightmare. So yeah. 
I don't Man, know. I people, think yeah. I've missed you. I haven't missed a UC in 12 years. And I'm thinking that, I mean, like I'm on the fence on if I'm booking planes, you know, yeah. I mean, just kind of where I am. I'm, I'm hoping to see some indicators from Esri on that subject pretty soon, you know, um, yeah. but that's really kind of in the heart of it all. And is, uh, is, I mean, I, I know I wouldn't want to be in their shoes having to make that decision, you know? So, yeah, that's tough. And, you know, you can see why, but they're pretty tight lipped on it too. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but book a hotel room. I, I would say go online and book your hotel room anyway. You can always cancel it, but <laughs> <laughs> definitely a good idea right now. Yeah. And I do see, I just kind of went to their website, you know, they have some, you know, some information up um, on, you know, what should I know about precautions that Esri's taking response to COVID-19, you know, on the, uh, and there's an FAQ from the San Diego Convention Center, you know, so I would say anyone who is planning on attending, if it does appear to be a go, definitely read up on that uh, 2020 FAQ from San Diego Convention Center, you know, so, and it looks like they put here that you can reach out to, uh, you know, confra, G-I-S, at esri.com for additional details and assistance, it says. So, you know, maybe, um, maybe you can get some questions answered there, that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Stay tuned, I guess. Myself, if I wind up going, who knows, maybe I'll drive again because I have done that a couple of times. So, so it's a nice drive down the coast and I'm lucky I've got a couple of close friends who live there too. So you're in Canada right now though, right? Oh yeah. I'm in, yeah, I'm in Victoria, British Columbia. So, I mean, I know like right now the borders closed except for what essential travel or are they redefining essential travel even more and clamping down on it more? Like what's, what's kind of going on up there? Yeah, they are. The borders basically closed. Um, and yeah, people that are, uh, cause there are a lot of people in border towns that work back and forth. Right. Uh, I think that's fine. People on work visas, I believe. Um, and you know, truckers, people that are, um, you know, they're keeping the goods flowing. Um, you know, yeah. We, uh, we sent our uh, Canadian personnel that was, that was living in Nashville and working there. We sent, we sent, you know, them back to, uh, back to Canada a week before. I was like, Hey, just work remote from there. Cause I don't know what's going to happen with the border. We'd prefer you to be closer to your family, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and they've been working up there for, for a while now. So, cause you know, we like to, we like, we like, you know, Dave and them from cogs and everything, you know? So, uh, we hire some Canadians that uh, come from COGS, so it's definitely an impact to us, you know, so. Wow, interesting, yeah. Yeah, I came back a couple of weeks ago, just beat the uh, closures, and well, you know, my wife's in Colorado, and I'm here, so she's she's not too happy with that, the fact that, you know, we're used to the distance, but the fact that there's a, basically like a, a wall of sorts that doesn't allow us is is kind of weird. And my green card. I'm in the very final steps of my green card. And that's, that system has come to a grinding halt. So for me, it's kind of disappointing because it's going to, oh, who knows, right? Who knows yeah. what's going to happen or will that be result in a backlog? And I've already been working on that for two years. So, that's, yeah. Man, that's crazy, Glenn. That's uh, life. Yeah. <laughs> that's life. That's life in this age where we are right now, you know? <laughs> yeah. On the bright side, my wife just got a nice job with HP. Good timing a couple weeks ago. So it was, it was good on her and great timing. She was actually a contractor with a, an agency there, but she, she got a job with them. So hmm. kind of a little added relief for us now. Well, I mean, I have, uh, I'm not sure if you, uh, uh, there, there was one developer that worked with us for a while. And uh, she's an interesting situation is a lot of people think the developers aren't impacted by this as much. And she had left Geo Job at the time and went to work for an agency that, um, that did secret shopping stuff and discount tickets for Disney. And uh, you know, she's been laid off now. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, so there's even some development community that's losing jobs, you know? So, um, you know, we're, we're hoping that we'll continue to see an influx of work and, can try and pick up some of that talent and give people opportunity and everything and, and hire them over at GeoJoke, you know? So, um, that, that would be, that would be nice to be able to provide some opportunity for people. You know? mm -hmm. so. Good. Yeah. People don't give up on uh, opportunities that are out there. This could, for those that are impacted, right. This is a good, might be a good time to. I mean, like if, if you're stuck at home right now and I doubt it's the target audience for this podcast, but if you know someone who is, who's in like, 
you know, the service industry or like maybe didn't finish that college degree or, you know, like, like they're in that situation. Like this is a chance while you're locked in, like go and learn to be a programmer, go and learn development. There's so many resources online to do that. And then you can come out of this with a whole new opportunity. Go, go work there, build a portfolio and a better insulated job from this type of modern issue, like where you're better insulated from a pandemic and, you know, it would be a higher paying wage for you. And there's a heavy demand for it. Like this, this could really, those people could see that as an opportunity during this time. You know, you're yeah. hunkered down, you take the time to learn to code, take the time to, to brush up on it, you know, go, go and learn that skill set. And then when we come out of this, there's going to continue to be that demand, you know? So I mean, if you got like a, you know, a, a niece or a nephew or, you know, a, a sister or a brother or, you know, someone out there or just, you know, someone that you know that is hunkered down and, and that boredom's starting to get to them or that cabin fever, you know, this is such a great time to learn that skill set. Please, please, please reach out to those people. Let them know there's opportunity afterward in it. Let them know that, you know, they can, they can find a silver lining in this and learn that skill set while they're at home. You know? Yeah, definitely. Don't, don't waste the time. The time thing that, that, yeah. Yes, we have. That's right. Yeah. People, people are dying around the world right now. Don't waste the life you have. Do something yeah. with the life you have. Yeah. Yep, those projects you started, right? You started building an application or, right? Maybe you're working on a webinar or writing a book. It's a good time. It's a good time. Yeah. That's right. Get that novel finished. Do it. <laughs> yeah. No, yep. you, yeah. I've started. Yeah, I have a couple I started. You know what? I got. I started doing like a, uh, I, I'm really interested in like open data, data mm -hmm. portals and that. And I started, I've, I've never, I've written thousands of articles and I've never done a book and I started in like a figure to be like an ebook on open data. I've got about 200 pages of, you know, in draft mode. And I think I started it five years ago. I really I should have, finish that one day. Yeah. I have a mentor. Like for instance, I have a mentor resource guide that I was always working on for FAQs and questions that people ask me, you know, and this is a good opportunity to go and kind of brush up on that thing in between, you know, working on other things. I know my, my directors that are under me as CEO would probably really appreciate if I did that because normally I was on the road 60 to 70% of the time traveling. So now that I have all this time that I'm not traveling and my schedule is clear, uh, perhaps I'm micromanaging a little more than I should <laughs> think will heavily evolve. So it'd probably be good if I took my own personal advice and brushed up on a couple other things and focused some other places at the same time, you know? Now, Glenn, speaking of other projects that can get started, I, I have an idea for you. Um, <laughs> have you ever seen Drunk History on like Comedy Central? Drunk like, History? Drunk History. Yep. They get subject matter experts on particular versions, particular time periods in history, or particular individuals in history, and they get them wasted, basically, or have quite a few drinks with them. <laughs> and they get to talk on the subject. So I was just wondering if there's ever the opportunity just for like, you know, doing the same equivalent of what you're doing here, but maybe with a couple of shots with the person that you're into, you know, and see what really flows out there, edit that together. Um, I think that could be uh, really entertaining. And I can't take all of the credit for this because this may have come out of uh, interacting with some other partners at the uh, partner conference discussing the particular uh, possibility. Um, but if you get a chance, Glenn, look at, look at Drunk History. Uh, that Comedy Central puts it out even on YouTube and everything, and think about what that would look like in a GIS, uh, a GIS frame. Because there were some people just talking about the old days of like the Dev Summit and like the beginning of it, like how it started, and uh, people talking about um, some of the first user conferences, the first time it was in San Diego, and like all these different, just people were just sharing stories. It felt so much more casual, you know? So uh, even if there's just like a storytelling thing, just on the history of GIS, just if we could preserve that, you know, that would be pretty awesome, man. You know, alcohol optional, but at <laughs> yeah. least talk about the history of uh, that first person in situ, like right there perspective of what things were like at the time, you know, so. That would be fun. When I, I've, been, I've rolled a number of these uh, um, this week and a couple have been late at night. We were over beers and it was funny one. I, I won't say who it was with, but I get a, uh, a message the next day saying, uh, Glenn, do you think you could edit out that part of, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. well, I can't, now I I've can't, got editing to do. Damn it. <laughs> I can't trust you to edit Glenn, because if you go back and you watch the geo geeks and cars where, um, you and I do our first one, you take a, you take a wrong turn down a one way. 
and we almost hit a car oncoming. Yep. And uh, you, you say an expletive and you say, we'll edit that out and post. And it's still in there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, keep it real. The scavenger hunt for anyone listening. Go look at the Geo Geeks and Cars on YouTube. Uh, between me and Glenn, there's a couple of them, and you'll uh, you'll find that uh, you'll find that one's pretty interesting. Little fact right there. So. Yep, that was fun in the gas lamp. I figure, hey, if Gary V can do it, right, <laughs> then <laughs> then I can drop an drop an f bomb every now and then too. I guess without I mean, offending too many. <laughs> I think if you're PG-13, you get one or something like that. For the American sure. <laughs> right. Maybe that's, maybe that's not F-bomb. might be like lower on the uh, curse chart. So. Right. But then with those videos, if there's too much, then I guess YouTube probably it has to assign that it's for mature yeah. audiences I, only. I, I'm pretty sure there aren't a lot of kids listening to our podcast or Geo Geeks and Cars. Just can't imagine. No. No, I don't think those sure are fun. I'd love to do more of them. They're a little, they're they're a challenge logistically at times, and uh, but they are fun to do. Well, these are fun to do as well. And Glenn, I really appreciate you having me on, and you know, mm-hmm. letting me talk. And you know, as as you can tell, and anyone listening, I I love to talk, so I ramble a bit. And and thanks for uh, letting me ramble here with you, Glenn. Really appreciate that. Yeah, good. It's been fun, David. And we're, you know what, we're about 45 minutes in. So maybe time to wrap it up. If there's anything, uh, anything else you want to add? Or... Sure. I think I yeah. about uh, blew all the wind out of my sail with everything I had to say there. And some of that's probably cabin fever, just getting to talk to someone else. So. Yep. Good. And you listeners, you probably, uh, hopefully you already know how to, how to find David and his team, but online, I'll, I'll add uh, a link in the uh, description. And but you can always find them, just Google GeoJob, no problem. Find them on Twitter and online, geojob.com. Right. And if you go to the ArcGIS Marketplace and you sort by popular, you have the number one, number two, and number three most popular apps on the ArcGIS Marketplace. So we are pretty easy right. to find. Right. Very important. Go to the Marketplace. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And download admin tools. It's free. There's no excuse not to use it. You right. Try it. <clears throat> okay, David, take care and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you, Glenn. Okay. And.